Welcome to the Quilts and Lace Multi Needle Machine Basics class. This is normally done in our store as a hands on class, but uh, because we are trying to get lots of our classes online, that will be my online version. I'm going to cover on this one on the either Baby Lock and Brother Multi Needle Machines, whether it is the 10 needle or 6 needle. On this picture, I have put the other Valiant from Baby Lock, the 10 needle, 10 needle version on it, and then the Brother 6 needle. But each company has uh, similar machines, and uh, I'm going to mostly co concentrate on the 10 needle, but many of these uh, uh, options on this one and the information is also valid for the 6 needles. The machines come with several accessories. And it's always best to refer the machine's manual because it will identify the parts that came with that specific model. And there are a little bit differences, especially between 10, the 10 and the uh, 6 needle machines. There are four hoops or frames. The manual calls them frames. We tend to call them hoops. But there are four hoops that come with the, each of the machines. But there are several additional ones. Some of them are manufactured by Brother and Baby Lock. But then a lot of third-party manufacturers uh, will provide hopes for the multi needles too. So I will have a little bit of information on that coming up. And the hoops are all uh, held up in the machine with the hoop holder or frame holder. I often call them drivers. And those drivers, we uh, have A and B that come with the machine. And then there are lots of specialty frames that require their special holders. And most of those specialty hoops and frames, they come with this, uh, their own drivers. But here's just a little quick memory rule. Uh, a for all, meaning all the hoops that came with the machine, they use the A driver. B for block, the square hoops. And there are a couple extra ones that go on this category too. C for circle, meaning those round frames. Then the rest of them, they don't really go with the memory rule. But the A, B, C kind of are easy to remember. But there are D, E, and A. I'll show you more information about this once when I go to the machines uh, and, the, and the later other part of the presentation. Here I have just a show of my uh, brother, Ten Needle, which is the uh, current model. Uh, Paper Lock Valiant is very similar. So main difference really is that on the brother, the knobs on the top are black, Paper Lock they are white. So I have just picked up some of the uh, pieces that came with the machine. So I'm going to go through the accessories that came with the machine. And the best uh, place to always look what uh, accessories are specific for your model uh, is to look on the manual. Because uh, that has the information on all the ones that uh, came with the machine, plus then some of the additional ones that uh, are available as options. So there are a few pages on this one. So I will set up and start going through all the, the little pieces that came with the machine. Okay, I've taken out the box, the accessory case, which has a lots of tiny pieces that came with the machine. Some of them are obvious, but now let me go through all of the ones. Um, on my hand, I have a packet that has two brackets and four screws. These were the brackets that were used or to hold the head in place when it was shipped. Um, I don't need to have them uh, if I just take the machine for a little short trips to the uh, service. But if I'm planning to take the uh, machine for a long ride, it's definitely good to have that, those ones uh, so that we can bolt the head in place. You just need to put the head on the number six position, the needle six position, and then you can put those bolts back in place. So I kept mine just in case if I move houses or something, so I'll have them ready. Other pieces that came with the machine, um, we had a uh, big wrench. Well, this one is used to uh, set the screws on the legs on the machine, just in case if your machine uh, wasn't on a really level surface, so that way you can attach the, and them properly. My machine is sitting nicely on a koala cabinet that is made for that, so it's a very sturdy case, And uh, but my, it, so it's just I can level those ones, so there's a bolt for other uh, wrench for that one. Then we have couple screwdrivers. Well, this one is the handy one to take these, these bolts out because they will just go for that one. And then we have a funny looking screwdriver. One side is a Phillips and standard one. This one is used to take the stitch blade out. I will show later on how do we cl clean the machine. So that is a screwdriver for that one. And then we have, of course, some, some are very obvious. We have little scissors. Well, mine are still in a packet. They're actually not too bad. They're fairly sharp. And a seam ripper, 
I keep that in a box. I'll never use that one. Yeah, right. Uh, then tweezers, which are sometimes helpful when you are trying to pull uh, the thread the machine. And then a little cleaning brush. So I'll yeah, use that when I saw the cleaning. And then we have thread nets. 10 thread nets because I have a 10 needle machine. And uh, these ones are designed to use for some of those slippery threads. So if your threads tend to fall off the spool, some metallics uh, especially might be helpful for that. Then uh, these, these ones are great to tame those slippery threads. So there are 10 of those ones. Then we have a can of oil because this machine, we need to hook uh, to put a little drop of uh, oil every, every time I turn the machine on in the race area. So uh, mine happens to be still untacked and it's like yes I am I am uh, oil in my machine but just a little tip that I don't like this person this uh, personally so much I have my little pen oiler this is really great we sell this at the in the shop uh, I get just a tiny drop precisely so any machine that you need to um, put oil on the hook like a chassis core machine uh, those ones uh, this is really handy one so instead of using this one that came with my machine I've been using that one but just one little tip that if you use this one, you need to first poke a hole on this one. So if you cut this tip off, don't cut a huge big piece because then you'll get so much oil out of it. I made that mistake with my very first uh, six needle machine. And I, I, every time when I try to get the little drop, I got the blob. So just to make a tiny hole on the tip if you use that one. But this little no, uh, needle oil to, uh, oil is much better. Well, then we have other pieces. Uh, they are little uh, felt. Uh, the machines underneath, they only have little, uh, uh, black felts, but there's 10 of these ones in case I want to use those ones. And then we have 10 spool caps. Well, the spool caps uh, are used when I'm using the standard kind of a spool uh, that has the shoulders on both sides. The cone shapes, I don't need to use these. So mine all happen to be at the moment on my box because I mostly use those standard ones. And let me get these other pieces out. Um, there's another screwdriver. This is a great one for tightening uh, the hoop screws, but also then whenever uh, I'm uh, tightening and when I'm changing the uh, these big bolts on here that will kind of help me to tighten. I often use hands too, but this will give you a little extra uh, uh, twist on it. Then there's a, a black popping cover. This one is used uh, with the cap frame. If you have the uh, cap frame that rotates the hoop, uh, then we need to put a little spacer. Other times we need to use this one on the, with the 10 needle machine would be with the scanning frame. So it happens that the scanning frame has one built in also, but uh, you need to have that one, so I kind of have a spare for that. So the, new, uh, the, uh, the Valiant and the Entrepreneur Pro X, these ones come with the scanning frames because we have the digitizing part in this machine too. Then I have a couple little clips, and I haven't put these ones in my machine. I should really, I guess. Uh, what they're used for, um, my machine, I, even though I can, uh, I could use my memory sticks, but very seldom on my machine I actually use memory sticks. I connect it directly uh, to my uh, um, laptop. So I, my, I have a cable kind of goes behind. Let's see if I can move the camera a little bit. So I have on the, there we go, kind of see on, uh, on the screen. On the uh, right hand side, yes, so I have a cable plugged in and the cable goes behind the uh, machine and then I, I can plug it onto my laptop that is on the left side of the machine. So, um, but the, um, so those little clips would be, uh, I would be able to put these ones um, in the side of the uh, machine and um, hold the cable in place so it doesn't get caught up. Mine is just neatly behind, so I haven't had any trouble so far, so I left it there. Then we have a tiny little screwdriver. That one is used to adjust the popping tension, and I'll go through the when we would use that one. The other tool for adjusting popping tension would be this uh, little weight. So I will keep those together when I show that part. Then we have a couple uh, funny looking tools. Both have a little spring loaded. Uh, these ones are great when uh, threading the machine, but al and also to change the needles. So I will show those ones a bit later. 
and then we have uh, this i think the machine comes with the uh, six poppins the pre-wound poppins i still have them in the box and then i have some pre-wounds that i have on, on this one as well then the machine comes with spare needles and it comes with two packs. Mine are still in a pack because I've been using some of the other ones that I had. And I had also a separate uh, presentation slide I talked about the needles. But the machine comes with some spares. Depending on, again, if you have a six needle or ten needle, you may get six or twelve. So those are some of the uh, smaller accessories that came with the machine. And then I'm going to move uh, onto the, uh, on the other table to show all the hoops. Just one other piece that you notice my machine, I have a sewing table. This is something that depends on the machine model. Some of the ones do come with this little table and some of the ones you can buy it as an extra accessory. Uh, it is a really nice table for the bulky items because that way it's either, uh, it gives a good support for, the, uh, for those bigger items. Uh, but if I do free arm work, then I need to take the table out and it's just going to come out. So it's really heavy table. So don't drop it on your toes because your toes, toe will be hurting if you do that one. Here's a little summary on the frames that use the A driver. Uh, there are a total of six frames at the moment that can use that A driver. Uh, the tiny little one, 4x4, 5x7, and then 8x12, 8x14. Well, 8x12 comes on two ways. There is just the kind of standard one and then a flat frame. I will show on my live demonstration what is the difference between those ones. Uh, the six needle comes with the first four hoops on those ones, and the 10 needle comes with the first three, and then the largest one, the 8x14. I have laid on uh, my cutting table uh, the hoops that I have for my machine. And this one I already show that this is the scanning board. So let me put that aside because it really is not the hook. That one mounts in the machine without any uh, drivers. It goes straight onto that the holder where the drivers go. And I uh, talk a little bit about that one on my number five class. Really the number five class is how to use the my design center IQ designer area. So uh, that's when I, I mentioned about that about that frame. So um, I'm not gonna talk more on this class about that one. But then on here on this front of the table, I have four frames that came with my machine. And every all those machines, they come with four. They all come with this little tiny one that is great for cuffs. Then it comes with four by four, five by seven. And then depending on the model of the machine, if you have a six needle, you get eight by 12. If you have the 10 needle, it comes with eight by 16. So nice large hoop, doesn't even fit onto the screen easily. So these are the ones that come with the machine and they use the uh, eight driver. And that was the one I have already on my machine. So I'll show in later on how we can uh, change that one. Then I have some extra ones. I actually have some hoops twice because sometimes it's nice to have an extra one if you do multiple ones so you can have uh, one hooped already when it, when it's embroidering another one. So I have an extra four by four hoop. But then this is another great frame that I, I like to use uh, because there's a big jump in my 10 needle from the uh, five by seven to eight by six, uh, eight by uh, 14 hoop. So it's nice to have the uh, 8 by 12 hoop also. So I got me this one, but this is a bit different uh, hoop. This comes on two ways. It comes with the normal 8 by 12, which is the standard equipment that comes with the, the six needle. But this one is of what they, they call the flat frame. And what that means is that the brackets that are on this hoop are different. So if I take the, the, um, the larger frame, they kind of look like the same same brackets, but what is different on this one is that the, on my standard frame, the the bracket that goes to the driver, that one is on the inner frame. On the flat frame, the bracket is on the outer frame. And what that means is it's a great one when you do bulky items because if you have really big of a quilt sandwich, so we, uh, heavy towel, it's hard to get it uh, that pile kind of underneath that driver. So this way it kind of goes over the, uh, the arm. So I have uh, uh, that one as a flat frame. 
but that 8 by 12 comes to two ways, like a flat frame and a standard. Um, oops, and then this one, I almost forgot. The standard frames, they also come with templates. And they are great for aligning designs because they show the exact embroidery area that the, the design would go. These only come with the standard frames. Uh, the, all these extra ones that I have purchased, I don't have one. I've had to buy them separate. The, the frames are actually sold separate. So when I've got my extra 4x4 frame, I don't have that template for it. But of course, I had a template for the one that came with the machine. The summary of all the frames that use the bead driver. The top one I have listed is the 8x8, which is a nice quilt frame. And then there's an uh, image of a border frame, which is the 4x12 hoop. And then the last jumbo frame, 14x14. 14 14. This one is a little bit special. This one only can be used with the 10 needle machine because of the embroidery area is so large. But also, uh, this, uh, this is a split hoop. So you need to have the embroidery design split if using either the BE design or palette software, anything about above uh, BE design next or palette nine or later will be able to split it for this hoop. Also BES4 with the power back or then embroidery works advanced. Those are at the moment uh, that I know of software packages that will do the proper splitting for this jumbo hoop. And then we, we have also a sleeve frame available, which is a great one for hooping uh, pant legs or sleeves in, in a t-shirts or maybe in sweatshirts. Then, actually before I move this one, uh, then I have, I'm going to put it together with the bead driver. This is the one that uh, piece that comes with all the current machines, whether it is a 6 or 10 needle, and they are not interchangeable. So I need to make sure that you have, if you have multiple machines, that uh, uh, they, they, uh, you can't swap one between another. It's just because this, <coughs> this one is larger for the 10 needle, the 6 needle doesn't have a big embroidery area, so it is a bit shorter. So the B frame then uses some of the other hooks. And one of the ones I have is a, a square 8 by 8 hoop. And that this is another one of those flat frames, meaning that the it, it, uh, the brackets are on the outer part, not the inner part. Then, uh, this one is not going to fit in a camera at all. This is my jumbo frame. I can do hula hoop dance with this one. This one is, is 14 by 14. It is a, a multi-position hoop, meaning the uh, machine doesn't really somewhat know about it because the embroidery area is only half of this one. Uh, so we need to have software. We, uh, whenever using this hoop, we need to really have embroidery software that you can do a split design. So that that way, is when I tell them uh, that uh, I have a large design and I uh, uh, cut it in, uh, cut, uh, split it in half. And here's one example. <laughs> I should, uh, this is my kind of sad to say. This was my test run, and then I just cut it out. But this design is available to purchase from the uh, Brother uh, Ibrory website. So uh, it is so big. So it just fits onto that big frame. And because it was made for the ten needle machine for the, for the jumbo hoop, it only comes as a split one. So I had to just put this design on a memory stick, and then my machine embroidered one half. When it was finished, it uh, then asked, do I want to embroider the second half? I said, sure. It asked me to put the, a little uh, snowman sticker on the, in the machine, on the, in the uh, hoop, and then it will, uh, will tell me to rotate the, uh, the hoop, and then it will embroider the other half. It's really easy to use this hoop, but you need to have the design split with the software, or then having the software that you can split your own this, uh, design. But that is a great one for uh, large quilt blocks or uh, uh, the jacket bags. Uh, it's a great one for that one. But all of these ones require to use the uh, B frame. There are a couple other, or B driver, there are a couple other hoops also that require that. And I showed those on my, dem uh, my presentation. Then some other ones. Um, uh, there's a border frame. Mine uh, is a little bit of a reject because it was a bit damaged, so I got this one. Uh, but this, these frames, uh, they, um, uh, they allowed me to do a border, and they're just going to clamp in place, and that way uh, I can I, uh, do one section and then easily get more the, uh, move the fabric underneath another one. So these ones come on two sizes, 5 by 7 and uh, uh, Sorry, five, uh, 4 by 7 and 4 by 12. The frames that use uh, uses the driver C, 
there are three frames, and this whole thing comes as a set. The driver and those three round frames, four, five, and six inch uh, diameter. So those, that, is, that is a set that will get the driver and the frames all in one pack. I have some specialty frames. Um, I have a bad pack, and these are kind of new ones. I just recently got these ones, round hooks. That are, and these ones come in the package with its own driver and the three frames. So these ones are, are great for round, because on a commercial embroidery machine, they really like to use more the round ones than the square, all those rectangular frames. They give a little bit more even uh, support for, for the uh, fabric that is hooked. And then we have some of the very special frames, and all of these are optional ones. D frame, uh, the, uh, the frames that use a D driver. So we have uh, different kinds of uh, clamp frames. There's a clamp frame S and M. Uh, the uh, uh, clamp frame S, there are three different uh, versions of it. There's a straight one and then left and right. Great ones for uh, embroidering little designs onto shoes or gloves. Yes, the design has to be fairly small because that. Uh, uh, that embroidery area is very small on that one, but they're great for embroidery tennis shoes, things that you couldn't other, really otherwise hope. But then we have a large clamp frame, which is a, a, a letter M. That one is a 4x4 four four frame, and it is a nice uh, hoop in items like uh, uh, lunch uh, box, uh, lunch pack uh, covers and things, things that you possibly just couldn't really get into your normal hoop. It just clamps it in place and holds it nicely. And finally, we have also frames that use the e-driver. These are compact frames, and this comes as a set with the driver and the four frames. And these are tiny, tiny little ones, but they are great for embroidering, again, the smaller, hard-to-reach areas that you don't need to use uh, sticky stabilizers. You can hook the item. I caught me another set of kind of specialty ones. I just love all these different toys. And these are these compact frames, and they come as a set of four tiny little frames and they come with their own driver. So whenever I put this driver in the machine, these frames just, um, they just kind of click in there. So that it comes as a set of four. So some of these specialty frames come with their own, uh, own driver. Well, then we have um, lots of extra things. And I have, I, I have on my presentation, I showed some of those um, other companies this is just one of those really nice tools from Durkee. It's called the Freedom Ring. They have them for the 4x4 and 5x7 frames. And let me find my 5x7 five by, five by frame. Sorry to make all these noises. So instead of me using this standard one that has the a screw for tightening the um, outer ring, what this one allows me to do is it makes it makes a bit easier to hoop especially bulky items because on this one I can just gonna release I can just oh, pull this one apart open open I just pull them open I had to use all my muscle to pull it open and then I can put my fabric on and I can just to release that little little ring I don't know it shows in the camera just going to pull that little ring and it just locks it in place and automatically uh, connects in there. Or then other options, sometimes I just take a big bulky item and push it in. But it's just instead of me uh, using the screwdriver, it's a little bit easier to use. So it's called the uh, Freedom, Freedom Ring and it's made by Durkee. And you can, uh, we can get those. We may not have them at the shop all the time, but uh, let us know and we'll order you one. Still in the type of frames. This would be the cap frame or actual cylinder frame. Um, the Baby Lock and Brother machines, we have two different versions of the cap frame. And these ones are the one that I have on the picture on the top row in there. That is the one that is only available for the 10 needle because that embroidery area is uh, a little bit more than two, uh, two and a half inches time, times 14. So you can embroider a design on a baseball cap that goes from ear to ear. There is also a smaller cap frame that can be used both with the 10 needle and the 6 needle. That embroidery area is fairly small on that one. And then we have a cylinder frame, which is another one that is nice to use on the band legs. So even on the wine bottle bags, I have embroidered a little design using that one on the wine bottle bag. So that those are some very, very special ones. And this again comes as a set. They have their own driver and then the hoop. 
Well, there are lots of specialty frames. Uh, Baby Lock also has a set of frames that uh, are called the tote bag frames. I believe these are still available, maybe not, but uh, they've been around for a while because the part numbers are for the EMB, which was the original fixed needle. But these ones are kind of double, called W hoops because uh, the shape is kind of like a W. But they make it easy to hook a tote bag so you don't have to take your seam apart. And they are, they come, they, those ones come on four different sizes. They are all individual ones. And then finally, I have just a little summary on some of those uh, third party frames. There are lots of other companies who make frames for the multi needles. And the ones on the top left, the fast frames, those ones you have to kind of watch a little bit because um, the machine doesn't know you have these tiny frames, but they are great. It's a very cost effective way to get several sizes. And, but that machine wouldn't know the size of these frames. Like all those ones that the manufacturer has made, the machine reads that frame and it knows that it is the right size of a frame for that one. But this one, uh, are the uh, dirty frame, uh, the dirty ones, and then the fast frames, the ones on the left hand side, those ones, the machine really doesn't know about it. The great thing about a 10 needle machine with the camera is that you can use the camera for the alignment so that uh, you will not accidentally sew on that metal part on the frame. Several of these ones are single part. They are not uh, uh, inner and outer frame like our normal frames are. They are a single part, so you would need to use sticky stabilizer to uh, hold your piece in place. But, you got, but they're really a great option, very, po very popular. Adurki also has all kinds of additional frames that have uh, uh, different sh shapes and sizes in addition to what uh, the manufacturer has. The one in the bottom on that one, that one is a cap frame. So it's not the rotating cap frame, what the manufacturers have made, but Adurki makes a one that uh, you can embroider a little bit taller uh, monochromo design on the top of the baseball cap. And then you can uh, so you have to flatten the cap, use a sticky stabilizer, and the pill will go through that opening. So just lots of options. Uh, then we have also HoopTech makes some frames. And these are great. These are quite a bit, these ones, the, uh, the dime frames. These are magnetic. And the nice thing about these ones is, is that uh, the machine knows that, that, that what size hoop it is, because they are made the same size as your standard frames. They will be using the, uh, the fiber A, which is used with the standard frames that come with the machine. I don't think I'll do a machine class if I don't talk about needles. Now, the needle is just the, so important. It's the smallest part of the machine, but it's the most important part. I can have a $15,000 sewing machine, but I have a bad needle, I still get bad stitches. So it is very, very important. And they do dull out. Especially when you embroider dense design heavier items, uh, uh, that needle is found through the layers of fabric and a stabilizer, so they will dull out. Uh, well, the needles that are used with the uh, multi needle machines, the nice thing about the uh, Baby Lock and Brother uh, 6 and 10 needle machines are that they use standard household sewing machine needles. We don't have to buy any sp uh, special commercial needles. Actually, that they need to have, use the standard household sewing machine needles. There are a couple packages, well, really one or two packages, depending on the model, that comes with the machine. And those are made by Orkan. And the needle system that is referred on those ones is HAX 130 EBBR. Uh, it's just a needle system, but really it is the same as your household sewing machine needle, the 13705H. Uh, e on the end just means it's an embroidery, so you can use a smith. This section that I have on this presentation, that is a direct copy from the machine's manual. So those are the ones that the manufacturer recommends to use. I have used some other organ uh, 13705H needles as well, and then some of the uh, dime needles. So as long as they are the household's uh, uh, sewing machine embroidery needles, they, they will work. And again, it's kind of standard rules. Uh, if you have a heavier fabrics, you may need to use a little bit larger needle. Typically, the embroidery needles comes uh, most of the times. They only come on 9014 or 7511. So I would maybe put the 9014 on the really heavy materials. And also, if I use a little bit uh, heavier threads, then I would need to have a thicker needle. 
I can put a smaller needles in the machine, and I have sometimes put a metallic needle or then uh, Microtex needles. Uh, but as long as they are this 137 or 5H. I'm just going to put a note that uh, if you put one of them really, really thinny, thin needles, skinny needles, do not use your built-in needle threader because it will break. On the new 10 needle, I can even uh, lock off that needle threader and I'm disable the needle threader on that ne uh, needle bar where I have the small needle. So I'll show that on my live demo on that one. But just a reminder, do not put that built-in needle threader for that. It will break it. And the picture on the bottom, that came from Smets, and it is a showing uh, an image of the same needle. And a human eye, when we look, the most left image in there, it looks like, yep, yeah, that looks pretty sharp needle. But when we enlarge this needle, you can start seeing that the tip on this one has already kind of turned into like a little crocheting hook. What happens on this case when the needle goes through the fabric, that those really fine slippery embroidery threads, they get caught on that little hook, and they pull a little extra piece on top. Lots of times you kind of think that, oh, the tension must be off. No, it was just caught on that little hook. But human eye, when we looked at that tip of the needle, it won't see that one. You may not feel it yet, but there is already start to be a little hook. So need to replace those needles fairly frequently. The one good thing is in the 10 needle machine, we have 10 needles. So uh, we kind of have 10 times longer time to do that one. Uh, I most times, I, when I change the needles on my machine, I just change them all at one time. And then as for threads, uh, well, most times we use the embroidery threads, whether it is polyester or rayon, that is kind of personal preference. Just a reminder that polyester threads, uh, they are a little bit more color fast, that even on a bleach, they don't fade out. And then also they are a little bit stronger threads. But rayon gives beautiful shine and uh, it's a little bit softer threads. So we can use either one of those. And as for any embroidery, we normally put the thinner th bobbin thread. And this machine uses the style L bobbins. So not the, not the larger class 15. They would not fit. It needs to be the style L. And I put in there that it loves gold spun polyester. Uh, some of those ones are now getting hard to uh, find. I believe they stopped making those ones. Uh, but the other really good one is the Fildec Magna, Magna Clyde, uh, the pre-wound bobbins. And I have a little image even on that one on this slide. Just a little reminder that you can buy very inexpensive filament type bobbin threads. And only note on that one is that, yep, uh, it might be cheap, but sometimes it's really hard to get a good tension on those ones. They are just so slippery. So anyway, so if, uh, if you uh, get it to work, fine, but uh, uh, I kind of like to go th that ones that I don't need to do too much fighting. So uh, then sometimes you need to find your own bobbins if you want to match your top thread and bobbin thread, like when a freestanding lace. So uh, we can use metal bobbin. The multi-needle machines do not come with the built-in bobbin winder, uh, but there is an uh, uh, optional bobbin winders available for that one. If you have the single needle persona or alliance in addition, you can wind the bobbins on that one. It uses the same bobbins. The uh, style L metal bobbins that are recommended to be used then if you use your own uh, uh, winding bobbins, uh, those ones they uh, can't be wound on the uh, current sewing machines because the size of that hole in the middle is a little bit different. So we, uh, you either had to use the Popping winder or maybe sidewinder would work, but uh, uh, that is just another option. And I just put a little bit of information, just generic things about threads, that uh, most of the threads are referred in a weight, sy in a weight system where the larger number indicates thinner thread. Most of the embroidery threads, we refer them as 40 weight, which would be the same as 225 denier or in a tech system 25. The tech system is used a lot with the commercial industry. So you may see some of those. And uh, that one is more logical. The larger number on the tech system means heavier thread. And then also some of the commercial threads uh, are listed under as a denier system. Again, that one, the larger number means heavier thread. So depending on the brand you're using for the, your top thread, there might be a little bit different systems used for those. I'm beside my machine. So let me turn it on. And when it, when it starts, it will give us a reminder that we need to put a drop of oil in the hook area. So here's our reminder for that one. 
and then it's a stealth that keeps your hand away because it will, it will move. Uh, I have turned on uh, the opening page again on this one. I actually normally don't have this opening page anymore because it is just kind of a uh, machine's not still uh, uh, totally awake yet. It just shows pretty pictures. So uh, they are pretty ones, but I've seen enough. So I will touch the screen and then it will start. Um, I'll go through the settings where we can turn off that opening page, but then it will tell me that the machine will move, meaning that the head will calibrate itself. The head will move and the arm will move and just keep my hands away, your coffee cup out of the way, that's okay. So it just lines up the needle back in the first needle position. So on this page, we will access for the different uh, 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 employee designs. And I had my little stylus kind of stuck on the top of it. There's a page for the stylus. This is the home page of the machine. This is where we can access all the embroidery designs. We have a few designs built in, not as many as the household sewing machines, but there are several pretty designs. Some made for those really large hoops. And we just go, there we go. And then this, this one, we have some of the Japanese characters and some other pretty designs. So again, the Baby Lock and Brother design machines, they have a little bit different designs built in. So the, uh, now there are some that may be the same, but some are different. The very last category on this one is a test pattern. And this is a great one to use whenever, when you are uh, changing maybe the type of popping you're using or type of threads. If you run the test pattern, it can run each needle and then we can see that the tensions are correct. So on, uh, we go back on that one. So that was some our major group of the embroidery designs. Then as any baby lock and brother embroidery machine, we have the frames. On this machine, we have 140 combinations. So I can just pick up the shape and, and then the style I want to have this one be embroidered. Then we have uh, built-in sewing machine stitches because this machine has a very similar embroidery side as we have with the Dream Machine and the Destinies. So we have a lot of uh, uh, even the uh, this uh, sewing machine stitches built in and the buttonholes. So we can do some large buttonholes. We can embroider them as well. Then we have a number of different kinds of fonts. Some of the fonts are monogram fonts, whether we want to do uh, the three letter monogram, where I can just pick up my uh, first letter and I can even change the size of it to set. And then I will just add the next one, go on the same one. I'll do the, uh, the center initial, set that one, and then I'll add one more and the loot knew that, that the last, and I just did ABC. Well, they're all on top of each other. So I can use the arrows or I can use the, um, uh, the stylus on the screen uh, to position those letters and make my embroidery uh, monogram. And on this section, we also have some frames that uh, can be put around. So very quickly, I can just make a, a pretty a monogram embroidery kind of pick up different ones in there so I can just create the design right there so I didn't really line up them perfectly but uh, just quickly to show that we can combine designs in the machine I'm gonna touch the house key and it just tells me okay to cancel yes I'm, I'm not gonna embroider that one I want to go back to home page so always quick way to get on this home page is to start the house key and then we have a lot of different fonts these are uh, the fonts that when you uh, get the keyboard and you can just do, type the lettering in it. I'm just going to do return and return. Then we have some large alphabets. This machine, we have a lot of them. There's the ele um, I guess 11 alphabets on this one. These are really very pretty. These are not fonts, meaning I only get one letter. So if I want to do my initials, I would then go and add, go to the same, pick up the same font. And then I need to find K, went too far. There we go. And then I set this one. So now that way I could make my little initials on that one. Again, go back to home page. Then we can of course uh, save designs in the machine memory and then retrieve them from here. Well, we have a few things that I have saved on my machine. And then uh, we can read designs uh, from the external memories. This one I can use as a SD card. We have a slot on the side 
we can use the USB and we have two slots on the, for the USB port and we can also use the direct computer connection. And mine, that is where I have that my computer cable connected on one end, so I can connect to the laptop and do the, the, the other side that way. And then on uh, the, uh, the, these ladies' 10 needles, the Valiant and uh, Entrepreneur Pro X, we also have my design center or IQ designer where I can uh, digitize right in the machine. Number five class, I will be going through my, on that area. On this class, I would cover that part. So that was just a quick tour on the home screen. And on, on the top, uh, I will show whenever we have a design, it will show which hoop on this frame, because we I have the A frame currently in the machine, which hoop I'm, uh, that design would fit. So uh, it will show the four hoops that I uh, what comes with the machine, plus also the 8 by 12, which currently is the one that I have set on my machine. So last time I had used the 8 by 12 hoop, so it will show little dotted lines because it will read from the arms on the machine where the, where the hoop size was. And then we have some of the uh, other settings in here, but let me start from the, uh, 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 from the right side. We also have a clock on, the, on this machine. It only shows the time. If I don't want to show the time, I can turn it off and then it just shows the symbol of a clock. And the uh, clock I can set if I want to have an APM or PM or 24 hour clock. I have mine set for 24 hour clock. And then I have set my date on that one. But that's it. It just only shows the time on this, but I can touch it and get the date. And adjust the time where it's needed. Then we have other pattern on this one that I can have a quick access to see what uh, kind of a threads I've set. And what I was doing last time, I was forcing to use the last needle, so I locked all my other needles on this one. So I'll go through a little bit what, what, what that all means. But it just shows the current colors that I have on my machine. And then um, I have a place that I can do the oiling. Again, I'll show later. This one is a really handy feature when you do applique. Because when I touch this one, machine warns me that the arm's going to move. It's going to bring that embroidery arm towards me. That way I can then easily put the applique piece in, play, uh, piece in place or trim it. And when I'm done, I just touch uh, then OK and it will then move it back in place. So I don't have to take the hoop of the machine necessarily to do that one. We go back on that one. And then uh, on this one, the very last part is the uh, anchoring it for transportation. So on this, when, if I would uh, put the, my machine back in a box or take it in the shop for service, I want to uh, move my the head onto the uh, center, which kind of can't be exactly center because we have an uh, even number of needles. So I'll go and put it for the number six needle. And you can even see that that's where it went. So um, it's just kind of a, a position that my head is most balanced and then I could uh, anchor those using the little brackets, I could anchor my head in place. So um, uh, whenever I turn my machine on, it went onto that number one needle. Again, if I touch it in here, my head moves onto that needle position. Let me close this one. And then on the next one, uh, we have lots of online help, very similar as we have in our sewing machines. I can go in the operation guide, uh, look for the principal parts of the machines. These are great, especially in the beginning or any time you have a doubt if I'm doing something correctly. Uh, if I wanted to see how to uh, set the machine up, uh, kind of go in really detail, how to adjust the tensions. Um, and there's um, lo lots of different kind of things on this uh, on, on here. Uh, we can also have information on a basic operation. So if I wanted to see how would I use the gap frame or uh, I use the different gap frames, how to put the bobbins in, how to thread the machine. So it will show in pretty detail step by step on, on that one. So those uh, and then troubleshooting information and then how to clean the machine. That, that, that is really copies on the manual. But then I really like this next section that is a video. So we have a lot of built-in videos on this machine. So again, especially in the beginning, it is great that if I want to see, well, how would I now want to put my pop-in in? What's the proper way to do that one? So uh, these videos are silent movies, but they go very detailed, uh, slow motion, and they show exactly how to put the pop-in uh, so that we put it the right way and then uh, how to put it in. Let me close that one. They're kind of short, like this is only 55 seconds. 
and then there's a tension test in here and some of the settings. But here's my upper threading. Again, the same way I can see how to uh, retread the machine if I uh, thread it from the beginning. So that's again, that's a great, and I can always pause and go forward or backward. So let me close that one. So these videos are really, really helpful. So um, there's uh, lots of basic operation, some embroidery operation ones. Maintenance, this is really good. If you ever doubt, well, I'm, am I doing the, uh, uh, the oil in the race area correctly? And also how to clean. These are very, very good videos to check on because they will show very detail on how we need to uh, do the oiling. And it kind of shows that we'll go on this uh, uh, area where the oil, oil can is. Because on the older machines, before these, these current models, we had to use the hand wheel behind the machine and turn it. On this one, we can just touch it on the screen and it will put the bobbin, uh, the race in the right area. So in this case, uh, we will just take the popping case out and this must have been a fairly new machine because they didn't even have a popping and no lint. Mine doesn't look like that. And then they take the oil can and then we'll put onto the oil on the right right prop. So I'm gonna actually play this video. It really shows that that is the area where we need to put the oil. And there's a little slit in there that will just put one drop of oil on that one. And then we touch OK and it will put the uh, popping uh, the race back in the area that we can then insert the bobbin. Again, it's just this kind of little one minute video, but it is a great one to show how to do the oiling. And the other uh, one on this maintenance area was how to clean it. Then I have a, a section about the settings. I'll go through that one in, in on my little next section, but there is a video about it also. And then we have my design center, which is the digitizing area. There are some videos built on that one. So this, uh, these are really great. 